Hi, Ben here with Amtex Equipment Repair Shop Online. This is a part of a chapter of uh, videos that I'm going to record back to back to show you, starting with today, how to rebuild, replace and rebuild uh, your pressure regulators. And of course, more videos in the future I'm going to record for you to show you how to do several different type of repairs on your pressure pump. As far as the pressure regulators, we use a device called Balance pressure reliever, which is also we refer to as a pressure regulator or some some areas they do call them BPR If we go to some of our machine, you'll be able to see the position of this valve Which is designated with a tag called pressure regulator. You can see it on the dragon here on the stack design right there Of course if you go to the power design, you'll be able to see it on the back handle Now it all depends on the model of the machine the fittings that are in the back the model of the machine will dictate the position of those valves, which way they're going to be running. As far as removing it, you're going to need a one inch wrench in order to remove the regulator off a unit. First, of course, remove all your hoses. Make sure you do mark them, uh, designate what uh, hose will go where. Uh, you do use the 1116 to uh, remove the high pressure um, hoses. And also a screwdriver to be able to loosen that uh, hose clamp and re uh, remove it off that valve. And one of the ways to get this baby off the panel is simple, removing the cap, which of course is going to be a spring inside. And then by using a one inch wrench, you'll be able to remove that retainer nut right there that holds the complete assembly against the panel. Now let's go to the uh, uh, workbench and show you how we can open one and repair one. Now, so this is the size of the wrench you're going to need to take it off the panel. We're going to put it to the side so there will be no confusion. Now the tools you're going to need, either you need two crescent wrench or two size 7 8 wrench or even one of each. Of course you're going to need um, a C-clip pliers and very small uh, Phillips screwdriver. And here's your seal kit, which of course if you ever ask for them, we can send them to you. They come to you in a small baggie. Now, as far as removing and figuring out what the problem is, one of the symptoms that you're going to see that your pressure start losing, it will be accompanied by water being le leaking out of this weep hole. So once you start, once the water start start leaking out of this hole, it's going to be indication that your pressure reg regulator is about to go out. It will not go out right away on you, but as time go by, as time go by and leakage increases, the regulator is going to start uh, bypassing more and more water and it will not be able to hold pressure. We're going to, I'm going to show you what area causes it uh, uh, once we get into the valve itself. Now, if you ever want to use a table vise to remove the fittings off of this, never put the valve itself into the vise because the valve is brass and the interior of this um, valve there is a very fine machine cylinder by, by using a vise and grabbing it with a vise there's a possibility that you might make that perfect cylinder into oval shape which in that moment the regulator is going to be gone it will not be reusable what I use I go ahead and use the fittings to be able to put it into the vise and hold it to be able to remove all my stuff off of it as far as the cap and of course the spring that comes out let's say we have already removed all the fittings off and we end up with this this is the part that we're going to be working on now this this valve is consists of several parts again starting with the cap this is the one that helps you pressurize the uh, press, pressurize the valve higher by turning it clockwise and of course if you go counterclockwise the pressure will drop we're going to go ahead and remove the cap off which of course is going to house the spring we don't need that right now there is a thrust plate that comes out which one end of it there is a ball bearing if you ever want to put it back in the ball will go in not the other way a lot of cu our customers they make a mistake and they put them backwards and of course you're not going to be able to get no pressure so we're going to put that to the side that is not the problem either the problem is in here where the silver silver piston is. In order to remove the silver piston, you're gonna need a C-clip pliers. Now, this C-clip has the intention of flying away from you. So you have to be very careful. What I do, I normally have the uh, valve on the table by covering the entire top. Of course, let me put my glasses on, I'll be able to see. 
I'm going to grab the two areas which I need to squeeze together to get it out before you pull it out make sure you cover the top because there's a lot of possibility that C the C clap is gonna fly out of your hand you will not be able to find it and of course you grab it and there it is we're gonna put that to the side so so far we have four pieces I'm gonna put this away so you will not be confused now as far as what is the problem area right here how we're we gonna get it out of course there is a backup washer which we need to remove so now we have five pieces. In order to get the pist piston out, turn the regulator upside down. Looking through this hole, you'll be able to see the end of the piston. By simply using your fine Phillips screwdriver, push the piston out. And there it is. There is another disc at the bottom, which this piston pushes against. You can simply, by just taking it out, by getting it to come out. Now this is how the regulator works, simple. You do have this disc at the bottom, and you do have this piston on top. Now it all depends on the tension of this spring, which is applied by this thrust washer. It all depends how tense this spring is. It allows so much of a bypass back into the pump. That's how you keep a pressure, let's say at 400, 500, whatever you set it on. So we're going to go ahead and put this to the side. Now we have about seven parts. Now in order to replace these, you do get a kit that comes to you in two set of seals. The seals that's around the disc, which goes at the bottom, normally doesn't go bad. However, if you need to replace it, you can simply go to any auto part or hardware store and uh, ask for a seven millimeter ID 11 millimeter OD o-ring that should work fine however if you cannot find that you may get away with six millimeter ID 10 millimeter OD which gives you a two millimeter wall thickness o-ring so again this is not the problem the problem is the piston the piston as far as replacing them you remove these two seal these two seal once you get the piston out you'll be able to see smears and all kind of burn on these seals simply remove them in order to replace them this what I have done I took a picture of them because they are so small you not you might not be able to see them in my hand I went ahead and took a, a picture of it and kind of that way I'll be able to enlarge them for you this is called backup seal which is gonna it's gonna have a hard feeling to it it's kind of hard for you to be able to even squeeze it but if you notice right here there is a cut. Why we have a cut? Because since it's a hard seal, we're not, we will not be able to kind of stretch it over this to put it in. That's why they have a pre-cut section to it for you, for you to be able to, let me just hold it on top of this white surface, you'll be able to see. You'll be able to place it in that um, groove, which this one, this seal goes towards the flat area. Now this is the one that helps the pump pressurize. But you can see it in this picture again. It has some kind of weird look to it. You, the inner edges are higher, the centers are lower, and then again, the outer edges are higher. Now, if you don't have this seal, if you cannot find this seal from your local um, uh, supplier place, you, again, you can always get away temporarily with a seven millimeter IV, 11 millimeter OD, O-ring, or Worst scenario, 6mm ID, 10mm uh, OD O-ring to replace the temporary till we can send a set of these seals back to you. So you'll be able to do the proper replacement of them. Now, as far as putting them in, let's say we already have replaced them. We put the hard one towards the flat part and the soft seals towards the, um, towards the pointed area. In order to put these in, very simple. We're going to start off by putting your bottom disc in. Make sure you use your screwdriver to nicely push it all the way in. Make sure this ring does not sit crooked, offside, just flat at the bottom. Then you're going to go ahead and put the piston that just been rebuilt in. Oil in it is going to, you know, it'd be better if you want to put some oil to kind of help it go in. So that way you will not damage the seal. If you notice, I'm pushing it in. 
Now we're gonna come back and put the backup ring. What this ring is, its inner diameter is a slightly smaller than the the edge right here, so it will not allow the piston from flying out. Then of course you set it on the table, you come back in, get your C-clip again, glasses go on, we're gonna go ahead and grab it, put it in, again, make sure you cover the top, enter it, let it go, come back in, with your screw, uh, screwdriver, make sure it's already set, it's not moving anywhere. Okay, as far as your thrust plate, the ball bearing is gonna go in. The next thing is your spring. And of course, here's your cap. You just did a rebuild of a pressure regulator with probably a cost of $5. Now this is, like I say, it's a series of videos I'm putting out. I'm starting off from the areas that there are possibility for them going out faster than any other area of the machine. Later, we're gonna get into rebuilding pumps, showing you different symptoms. The pump is leaking, we know where to go and what area to change. As leaking water, it might be a symptom. Then we have a different symptom, you might have, you have, a, you might have an oil leak. You might have oil and water mixing up in the back of the pump. So there are several different areas that you don't need to go through a complete rebuild of a pump, except some specific seals that you need to change. And of course, as time go by, I'm gonna get into the piston pumps and show you how to rebuild those because some of the machine that we have in the market, they do carry the piston pumps. So that's pretty much it. So this is gonna be the session for today, showing you how to rebuild your regulator. I'm gonna see you in future videos, showing you more and more information about your machine, how to maintain it, so you'll be a champion every day in and out serving your customer. Thank you, and we we'll see each other in the videos.